So I ultimately took out $63,000 in United States loan debt. Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Kaylin. I'm a master's student at the University of Oxford studying history and in the fall I'll begin my PhD in history and African American studies at Yale University. So today's video is going to be all about how much it costs for me to attend Oxford as an international student for my master's. I went to Oxford for my master's in US history for their nine month degree which is called the Master of Studies. They have other degree programs for masters such as the MSc or the MPhil. The MPhil typically two years at Oxford. So we're going to be specifically talking about the nine month master's program for US history. And many of these fees will apply in other areas of study. So as an international student, you pay much higher fees than UK nationals or even EU nationals. And so I'm going to be walking you guys through how much money I took out in federal loan debt and how much the tuition costs, how much accommodation costs, etc. And basically how I have managed to budget it. So I wrote everything down here on my iPad. So we're going to go ahead and just jump right into it. I ultimately decided to attend Oxford because I thought of it as an investment, a financial and time investment in my academic work in order to get me into a PhD program that would be well ranked and would be the best fit for me for my PhD. So ultimately, my investment paid off. And though it may seem like a very lofty financial investment, it was one that I was willing to make and I know how I'm going to be paying it off. So ultimately, I never recommend taking on any loan debt if you are unable to pay that off. There are plenty of other ways to find financial scholarships, fellowships and other means of financial aid to attend Oxford for your master's. So you should look into those pathways as well. Unfortunately, due to my timeline, I ended up applying a little bit late in the cycle. I had made the decision to apply for a master's a little late in the game. So ultimately, I did not have enough time to apply for scholarships. And unfortunately, when I checked, I was ineligible to apply for the roads because of my age. I was just like, I believe a month or two outside of the age bracket, which would have allowed me to apply for the roads. So ultimately, I saw it as a financial investment that was worthwhile for me, but I wanted quick put a disclaimer that I don't want you to take this as something you have to do in order to get your PhD or to continue in academia. In the United States, your PhD is typically funded. My Yale PhD, the tuition is covered. I get health insurance and I get a living stipend. Once I get to Yale, I can make a video all about my budgeting and how I'm using that stipend in order to pay rent and my other daily expenses. So if that's a video you guys want to see, please let me know in the comments down below. I just want your feedback. And also when you guys like and comment my videos, it makes it so that other people can see these videos and it reaches a wider audience. So please go ahead and contribute in that way. It really helps my channel and I really appreciate being able to interact with you all. And so we're going to go ahead and jump right into it. I'm going to tell you guys a little bit about the situation. It might be a little bit of a long video. So go ahead, grab a cup of tea or coffee and let's get going. So in order to attend Oxford, I ended up taking out US federal loans. So I have a direct and subsidized loan that amounted to $20,284 and a direct plus loan, which equated to $42,807 to total $63,091 in federal loan debt. So if you guys want more specifics on unsubsidized versus direct versus subsidized, I can do another video on that. I do want to do a video on my loan repayment plan. So if that's something you guys are interested in seeing as well, please let me know. But I'm not going to go into the, all the details on that right now. Ultimately, I filled out a FAFSA form, which is the federal financial aid program for the United States. I filled it out for when I attended UCLA and then for when I applied for grad school. And I will likely have to apply for it again if and when I get into law school. So my tuition as an international student for my Oxford degree amounted to $31,846 dollars and 71 cents US dollars. So if you guys are coming from a different country and you're trying to figure out what it would be for you, just make sure that you go ahead and go do a conversion. I did conversion into United States dollars. So the way that my loan would disperse was that it would go through my college first, it would pay my tuition fees, my accommodation fees, my administration fees, and my food top up fees. So basically my food that I ate in hall, and then the remaining amount would come directly to me. And then that money would be used to pay for electronic requirements for books, for food, for living expenses, for travel, that kind of stuff. So the 31,000 I paid in tuition was broken into the three terms. So Michaelmas term, Hillary term, and Trinity term. And ultimately when I talk about making an investment in my master's program, I decided that taking out $63,000 in debt 
was going to be much better than paying $50,000 in tuition per year for a two-year master's degree at say one of the Ivy League colleges and so ultimately financially it was a better investment for me to go to Oxford it was less expensive it took less time and ultimately it got to me to where I want to go I might have been able to get more financial aid and I might have been able to get more scholarships had I remained in the United States but I think that diversifying my application and attending Oxford was important for me that's just an investment that I decided to make so again I just want to mention that here and also be able to to weigh the cost of tuition say if you were to attend Harvard for a master's that would be $49,000 intuition per year for a two-year degree. So as for accommodation fees, so basically what I paid in rent, I paid a total of $2,345.82 per term over eight weeks. So approximately $1,100 or so per month. And then multiply that by two because I was there for two terms due to COVID. So I was there for Michaelmas term and for Hillary term, and that amounted to $4,691.64 USD. In college, you also have administration fee. Administration's fees to take care of your college expenses. It takes care of your MCR membership fee and all of that, I believe. So the administration fee amounts to $75.27 per term times three terms. So you'll pay a total of $225.81 for all three terms. And in terms of food top up, so basically the amount of money that I would put into my account in college to eat in hall was around $689.95 per term. I was there for two terms, so it amounted to $1,379.90 USD. The amount of money that was taken out in terms of my administration fees, my tuition, my accommodation, everything that was taken out by college amounted to $38,000. $144.06, but it would have been $41,179.83 had I been there all three terms. So because of COVID, I did not pay a food top up fee and I did not pay accommodation fees for Trinity term. So just keep that in mind when you are considering going to Oxford because those are going to equate to three terms rather than just two for me. In addition to that, I want to talk a little bit about other expenses. So the library system at Oxford is a bit challenging and I ended up having to just buy many of my own books. It was my preference. I did not want to have to go to the library every single time I wanted to read a book and especially because I tend to study at night or very early in the morning. And so I spent around $600 on books this year. And that's not uncommon for me. I typically spend quite a bit of money on books. I would say around $1,000 per year for my books. And I don't see a problem with that. There are book funds and other things that you can apply for if you're at a school for an extended period of time. I will definitely be applying for those when I get to Yale. But ultimately, I see books as an investment in my research and in myself and in my collection. I prefer to be able to write my notes in my books. So I don't see that as a major inconvenience and I see that as part of my fees. So I rounded it out to around $600 spent on books this year. And then in terms of electronic equipment, so I ultimately decided that I needed to upgrade my computer, one, because of my academic work and how I was going to need a reliable computer for the next six years as I head into a PhD, but I also wanted to upgrade and get an iPad for my note taking. So although obviously it is a lot more expensive than buying traditional stationery, I find it much more useful and it's also useful for my business and other practices. If you guys wanna know a little bit more about going digital and why I made the switch from typical stationery to an iPad, then I will go ahead and link that video in a card as well as down below. So this year I also had to purchase a phone because the phone I had before was basically glitching out on me and I needed to upgrade. But unfortunately, when you upgrade and you have to leave and live in a foreign country, you have to buy the phone outright. So I ended up using some of my loan in order to buy a new phone. I typically would have put my phone on a payment plan had I not been in the UK, but in order to use an international SIM card, I had to buy the phone outright. So I spent around $4,000 total on electronics and electronic equipment that also includes software. So there was some software that I did have to update on my computers and other things that I ended up purchasing. So $4,000 is probably a low estimate in terms of how much I spent, 
but that's how much I calculated when I pulled this all together. So in total, it amounted to around $42,744.06 with all of my fees. So that includes my books, my accommodation fees, my tuition, my food top up, my electronics, all of that. So it would have been $45,779.83 had I stayed in the UK and COVID had not happened. So just keep that in mind. And in addition to that, I also calculated travel. So planes, trains, buses, and this estimate is on the low end. Flights are incredibly expensive to and from the UK. I also had to use it in order to take trains to London, take the bus to Oxford every single time. So my travel fees, I would amounted to around $2,000 for the year, but I believe it might have actually been more. But you also have to keep in mind the immigration fees. So this is something that I did not calculate when I was first preparing to go to Oxford. I did not think about how much money a tier four student visa was going to cost me. So ultimately I ended up paying a immigration health surcharge of 600 US dollars. That is to cover your health care by the NHS while you were in the UK in case something were to happen. And it does give you peace of mind. It was very expensive, but nonetheless, I am glad that while I was there, I did not have any incidents and that I would have been covered had there been something that had gone wrong. And then I paid $500 USD for the tier four visa. All right, so in addition to that, I also wanna say that I put away around $10,000 into my savings account for my move to New Haven. So. Ultimately, I had quite a bit of money left over from this term because I did not pay accommodation fees at Oxford. I did not have to pay my food top up fees and that kind of thing. And while I've been home, I've had a part time job, which has managed to help me pay for my daily expenses, including food, gas, all of that. So I ultimately put all the money that I was given for my US loan into my savings account and I'm using that money for my move to New Haven. I'm also adding additional money from work, but because of COVID, my family is unable to help me with my move, which I was planning on them being able to help me. So I'm really lucky that I have this US loan and that I have a loan repayment plan. So I don't plan on using all of that money. It's mostly so that way I have the peace of mind. It's just sitting in my savings account and I'm prepared to use it for my move. I want to set myself up nicely when I am in New Haven because I'm going to be there for six years for my PhD. And so I want to make sure that I'm nice and comfortable. So I'm not touching that money until I move. That's also subtracted from the total amount. In addition, I did not have a job while I came home for winter break. So the winter break was around, I believe, six weeks. I can't quite remember but I ended up also taking a trip to DC, which I did not receive a travel grant for. I ultimately had booked this trip to DC ahead of time because I thought that I was going to be needing to do research at that time, but I ultimately ended up not needing to because of the sources I ended up using. So that trip ended up just being more for recreation. And then for the rest of the time that I was home, I also had to pay my own way with food. I had to pay for gas. I also went down to LA a couple times. So ultimately I think I spent around $1,600 when I was home over winter break in terms of travel and food and all of that. So. I also subtracted that. So then when I take that total amount and subtract it from my US loan, I was left with $5,655, which was divided over seven months. So October, November, half of December, half of January, February, March, April, May. So I did not include June, July, or August because I am working during this time and making enough money in order to pay my expenses. So ultimately I was left with around $807.86 per month. And that went for food, it went for clothing, it went for little weekend trips, it went for going out with my friends. So the thing about budgeting is just keeping in mind how much you're spending, how much you're able to allocate. And ultimately when I actually rounded out, it was probably less than that because of other fees. I also have other monthly expenses to keep in check, including subscriptions and memberships and that kind of thing. So I ultimately took out $63,000 in United States loan debt. And I do have a loan repayment plan. I do have a way of paying it off. And I also am going into my PhD where I will be making a salary per month for my PhD, which is my stipend. And in addition to that, I also have my consulting business and my YouTube. And though it doesn't create that much revenue at the moment, 
I do make some side income, which is incredibly helpful. And I ultimately decided to start my business on the financial side because I wanted a way to pay off my federal loans. I still have a little bit of loan debt from when I was at UCLA. It's not that much, but when I combine that with my master's degree loan, I do want to get that paid off as soon as possible. So it's always on my mind. It's something I write down. And I think that the most important thing in terms of loan repayment plans is being very much aware of how much debt you have and how much money you can kind of put away. So when I made my budget for my Yale PhD and how much money I'm going to be making in my PhD versus how much money I'm going to be making as kind of my side income with my business and with my YouTube. I ultimately managed to work out a loan repayment plan. It's gonna be slow going, but I have a way to do it. The question I get asked the most is how much Oxford costs and how did I pay for it? So now you guys have the answers. You guys know how much debt I'm in. I was very open in this video. I was cautious about making it because I think that Money is something that can be a little bit touchy, but I think it's something we need to discuss more, especially in academia and especially in higher academia because the salaries of graduate students are quite low and the access to actual scholarships, especially in the humanities, is incredibly difficult and especially as an international student. So I wanted to start that conversation. I wanted to kind of begin this Money Matters series for grad students, for students overall. And now I'm going to be starting this series in order to cover scholarships, loan repayment plans, how much it actually costs in order to be a graduate student and to live as a graduate student. It's, you definitely don't make the big bucks, but there is definitely a way to survive and to thrive within it. So that is what my videos are all about. And I hope you guys found value in this video and that you guys are excited for this series. If you guys enjoyed this one, please give it a thumbs up and go ahead and hit that subscribe button because there's a lot of videos coming your way over the next couple months. I moved to New Haven in 47 days. So that means that the moving vlogs are coming. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you may have even seen a sneak peek of what is to come. So I hope you guys are as excited as I am. I love filming these videos. I love getting to be able to provide more information for you guys. So if there's any questions you guys have, please leave them in the comments down below. If there's any other videos you guys would like to see about money and financing or any other aspects about grad school and education, then go ahead and leave me a comment or shoot me a DM on Instagram. I love hearing from you guys and I hope you guys have a great week. Thank you everyone and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. He started with hello on a summer afternoon. I lost myself and everybody else when I found you.